dreadful Yes, I'm being dreadful How could we be careful when we ain't really careful? Therefore, all the youths need a good mentor Yes, Lord, all the years this we endure There's no cure, all the cops screaming Ten for what for? Government always trying to send, so we at war. Yeah, we black, but we really called more. It's on poor. All we care about is Jordan Concords, looking stars. Why you taking things that's not yours? All boy, that ain't no way yet. I on the George Floyd, stay on point. Half America is really unemployed. We annoy, killing people. It's a state of paranoia. Can't look crazy. All these business burned down and destroyed. No insurance. Think my people kind of missing what's important. Yeah, stand up for your rights. Yeah, we putting up a fight. Like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon, starts now. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, people, and happy Thursday. <laughs> Closer to the weekend, man. How you doing, brother? I'm good, bro. How about yourself, man? I'm doing good. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth and not care who doesn't like it. Our sister, Rebecca Azor, will be joining us momentarily. Uh, hello to everyone in the chat room. Be sure to hit that like, that share, and that subscribe button so that you can get notified every time we go live. James, you about to get that vaccine, man? Bro, I think so. They didn't open up a whole nother section now in Georgia. So the section that opened up, the overweight and obese, my hefty hey. ass is going to get the vaccine, brother. Hey. Bro, look, man, like I told you, man, I'm going to take me and my stomach and put it right on the table. I'm like, let me get this shot. Hey, let like, me go ahead and get this shot. Let me get that shot, player. It's time, man. I'm trying, like, bro, I'm still counting days because, you know, we, we had to leave our bubble on Saturday to take Jeremiah to the emergency room. Oh, and, yeah. You know, yeah. I was in there. I'm looking around. I'm scoping out. I'm spraying down stuff. So I've been counting the days, you know, trying to get past that first five, 10 days or whatever. I'm tired of having to do that count. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready to get back <laughs> to some normalcy, man. I'm ready to get back to like just some life as usual. And, uh, and they, and, you know, the crazy thing is, is like, they need to hurry up and just get these vaccines to everybody because most to people everybody. are ready to go. Ready to go. I, yeah. And it sounds crazy. I know this is going to be the wildest thing I've said in a while, but I actually miss my commute to the office, to the to, to the <laughs> studios and stuff. Like, like just, just that time in the car by yourself sometimes was, you know, you don't realize how much you miss it until you didn't have it for a whole year. So I'm looking yeah. forward to getting back to some, some normalcy. So, I, yeah. So let I me agree. know when you're going, man. I, I, I might I might slide up in there right next to you and be like, this is my brother. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so good morning to everybody. We want to take a look at a couple of news stories um, as we begin this morning. Of course, there's politics. There's presidential politics. Um, there's also congressional politics that we need to cover. Uh, I want to begin, though, this morning with the fact that the $1.9 trillion stimulus package has been uh, passed completely by the House of Representatives. On Wednesday, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. It included, the included rather in the bill is the $300 a week unemployment benefits, a $3,000 tax credits to parents, and $1,400 checks to qualified Americans versus all Americans. The bill is the largest stimulus package in American history with almost 70% of the tax breaks going to households making less than $91,000 a year. The legislation will now be sent to President Joe Biden's desk for signature. Um, one of the things that stands out about this is the question of if Republicans were not going to sign on to this legislation in the first place, which they were not, um, then why all of the last few weeks of negotiations um, someone pointed out um, on Twitter, why, who were they negotiating with if the Republicans were never going to sign it in the first place or, or vote mm -hmm. for it in the first place? And that's a, that's a huge question because the negotiations actually took down the amount of uh, unemployment benefits from $400 a week to $300. It took down the amount that every American would get from 2000 to 1400 and now it's qualified with means testing. And so the question still remains, who the hell are Democrats negotiating with? Now, that said, there are some good things in this bill. And as we stated yesterday, I called it. I, I promise you, like, I, I'm a prophet if I'm nothing else. I told you that there would be Republicans who didn't vote for this, who absolutely would take credit for it. I want to talk about uh, the, the Republican Senator Roger Wicker, Republican from Mississippi. 
he tweeted the following. After voting against the bill, he tweeted this. He said, independent restaurant operators have won $28.6 billion worth of targeted relief. This funding will ensure small businesses can survive the pandemic by helping to adapt their operations to keep their employees on the payroll. Now, this is the dude, James, that voted against the bill. Right. I thought it would take maybe I thought it would take maybe three weeks, maybe a month before Republicans started taking credit for something that they were not going to support or that they did not support. But here he is the very same day that the legislation passed the House of Representatives, a Republican taking credit for it. An aide to Wicker told Newsweek on Wednesday that Senator Wicker, quote, Senator Wicker has supported targeted relief for restaurants from the very beginning. He was not able to support the $2 trillion poorly targeted spending, as was proposed by congressional Democrats. He will continue working to advance targeted relief for restaurants and other groups that have been hit hard by the pandemic. I, I just, you know, I, I'm, I called it, man. Like, I don't want to be like pat myself on the back too much, but Lord Jesus, I did not expect these clowns to do it the very next day, James. They have, they have absolutely no shame, man. None so whatsoever. No time dude no time now you gonna vote against the bill but get up there and like yeah you know we did a great thing you shut the hell up you stupid please and, and here's the thing like if you come if you couple this with the fact that democrats are not touting the good parts because as much yep. as i as as upset as i am about the 15 dollars an hour and we should be as much as as upset as we are about uh, taking it down from two thousand dollars to fourteen hundred dollars and then means testing it, basically cutting out about 12 million Americans. We should be upset about that. But there are some decent things in this bill. And unfortunately, the American people, we have been beat down so much that it's almost like we'll take whatever we can get just so that we can survive yeah. to the next week. Yeah. That said, the Democrats aren't really even touting the, the important stuff in here that's good. While now you see the first Republican came out and talked about how this is a win for his constituents. And I guarantee you across the country, you're going to have Republicans repeating this over and over again, because if there's money going out, they know how to take credit for it. And the Democrats yeah. apparently don't. And so this does not bode well. This doesn't bode well for 2022. The Democrats have to come out really hard on this swinging, even though, again, I, I, I can't I can't talk positively about the bill without actually pointing out all of the places where Democrats actually failed. But at the same time, these clown ass Republicans, excuse me, these Republicans <laughs> are absolutely shameless with their hypocrisy. They voted against this. They did not want you to get $1,400, let alone $2,000. They sure as hell were not gonna support $15 an hour minimum wage. They didn't have to worry about that part because they had eight Democrats take care of that for them this time around. There was nothing that Republicans were willing to actually do to help the American people. But now you see the first Republican stepping out there, taking uh, taking credit for it, despite the fact that if it was left up to them. We would not be getting a single dime from the so government even a, a full year, a full year into this pandemic. And they're still voting against uh, against us getting some relief. It's absolutely, absolutely asinine. Um, I just don't get it, man. I, I really don't understand it. It's just like, who are y'all talking games. to about these things? They're playing games, bro. <laughs> they're playing games. They really are. And, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm happy to receive this 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 fourteen hundred dollars because it's gonna help pay a bill or something. But you know, when that's, that's gone in in a, in a couple of days, yeah. then what am I gonna do next? Because mm. that's why y'all trying to hurry up and open back up and get all the vaccines out. Right. Right. But even right. still, once the vaccines are out, it's still going to be some time before we get back to normal. Come on, man. Right. Y'all got to do before. better, bro. <laughs> Y'all got to do and, so and much better. Is, bro, this is the thing. Like when I say they playing with us, they like they really are playing a game of what's the bare minimum we can give the people to keep yep. the people from tearing this place apart. Right. Because, I mean, there's nothing like having hungry children to push someone into the streets, right? Their inability to, to have a house over their head because of this pandemic. And while you're seeing billionaires getting even richer, you see politicians playing games. Like that's the that's the recipe for a revolution. This week marks uh, the uh, the anniversary of the, uh, the February revolution, which actually took place in March because of the difference in calendars in Russia at the time. Um, but one of the number one one of the n number one catalysts for revolution was the fact 
that their children were hungry, right? Mm -hmm. It was the fact that the mothers told the men at that time, do something about it because their children, their bellies were empty and they were starving. And that is the recipe for uh, actual factual revolution. And what our politicians, both parties, the, the ruling elite, the top 1% have, have figured out is that one, they demoralize us, right? Yeah. They, 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 they break our spirit over and over and over again, such to the point where if there's anything wrong, we automatically look at ourselves instead of the system that's benefiting off of us, right? Mm -hmm. So they've broken, they, they've broken us down. They've gotten us to a place as Americans where we'll basically take anything they give us so long as they give us something. And that's what this bill is. It's just something. Because like you said, yep. James, that $1,400, for a lot of people, that's gone because they're, they're in the overdraft by like eight $900. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. by, them, by them just giving us this penance, it's like, okay, people are like, okay, Whew, I got a little bit of relief, but the real relief is being sent to all of these corporations, all of these businesses, like they are the ones who are getting the real relief while average American families are struggling. And so that's why they're playing a game. But James, they're also playing with fire because I don't know how long people can actually put up with this uh, much longer. But hell, we've been in for a year. So maybe maybe they know better than we do. Maybe 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 the people are just going to keep putting up with uh, the government not doing what they're supposed to do. I don't know, man. Uh, but it, it still remains to be seen. Uh, the good news is, is that the legislation will be signed um, on Friday by President yeah. uh, by, I almost said President Obama. <laughs> Obama, by, really? <laughs> by, by President Biden. It will be signed into law and those stimulus checks will start going out. Um, and and we'll see what happens after that. But this I, I got a feeling this is the last round of stimulus checks. There's, I don't think there's going to be yeah. any more. I don't think there's going to be any more money for the people after this. What you think? This is it, man. I really think this is it. And I just hope that, you know, kind of part of me kind of thinks like what would have happened if they would have decreased the stimulus sum? Would the streets have rose up then and said, OK, now mm. it's time to do something? Or would we have this just set content and dealt with this six hundred dollars that we got last year? <clears throat> Excuse mm. me. But yeah, man, I really think this is it. This is yeah. not going to be any more money. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so, I think that's it. It, as well. it really so, sucks, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I want to shift gears and go to a little bit more coverage of what's happening across the pond. Now, I don't particularly care about the he said, she said of the Meghan Markle uh, conversation. But what I am fascinated by is this attempt to rewrite British history. This attempt to make it seem as though they were not the original colonizers, as if they were not the ones who utilized white supremacy, divide and conquer tactics across the globe in order to dominate the globe where the sun never set on the British Empire. Uh, Nigel Farage, former conservative member of parliament in the UK and leader of the Brexit campaign, appeared on Newsmax, which is a United States based right wing propaganda outlet. He appeared on there on Wednesday evening to discuss to discuss Oprah Winfrey's interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. In his defense of the monarchy, he said the following, he said, nobody in the world in history has done more for people of color than the British royal family. Let's take a look. <laughs> exactly. The queen and the royal family have spent the last 70 years touring round the Commonwealth. The vast majority of those people are black and Asian. I would put it to you, nobody in the world in history has done more for people of color than the British royal family. I'm disgusted, the British people are disgusted, and by a majority of two to one, opinion polls now say we want them stripped of their titles. Right. So let me just let me repeat what this clown said. He said nobody in the history of the world in history has done more for I think he must. I think he meant to say two. I think this is what he actually meant to say. He said nobody in the world in history has done more to people of color than the British royal family. Because that, he's, that he's, he's, he's missing. He's mixing up his preposition there. He's saying four people of color. No, I, I, I just it, it, it amazes me. And then even Prince. William, whichever the older one that, that's bald like us, um, he came out and said that the British family, the royal family is absolutely not racist. Y'all are the original racists. The like, original. <laughs> you guys come from the bloodline of the original racists who conquered and colonized black and brown countries across Hello. the globe to the extent where your empire 
was was visible from sun up to sundown. Like the, the again, I want to say the sun never said this is what you all used to brag about. And the only way you're able to make that claim or the only way you were able to accomplish it was through literally destroying entire nations and erecting a white supremacist structure that divided and conquered the people of those lands. And yes, I'm sorry, that doesn't just go away because now we're in the 21st century and now you guys are trying to, you know, whatever. But you still have colonies. You still have nations that are still setting themselves free from having the queen be the head of state. And so it's just, just, it it blows me away the nerve of the original colonizers of the, and this is why I go so hard. Like when, whenever anybody asks me that my only real interest in this is to the extent, the extent to which Meghan Markle and Oprah Winfrey and Prince Harry can actually lead to the downfall of the monarchy. Because yes. monarchies by itself, in and of itself, has been a plague, a blight on world history. And the British crown is leading amongst them. But this right. crown, I, I want to play it one more time because I just want to make sure we heard it right. <laughs> He's saying that nobody, this is what, this is, uh, I got to watch my mouth and, and remember I have a very diverse audience. But this is what, this is what, <laughs> this is what y'all cousins and them do. They yeah, love, right. they absolutely love saying like, like, this isn't the, the Confederate flag isn't about racism. It's about our heritage. Right. Huh? No, it's literally about slavery. Right. It's and they love to say, oh, slavery. we're the least we're the least race. I've got black friends. Huh? No, <laughs> this this is part and parcel of exactly what. what and you, look at who they connected with before we watch it again. They connected with Newsmax which is the leading right. edge of white supremacy media in this country. It's just clean and sanitized with people with suits on and flashy, you know, flashy graphics. But underneath it, or not even underneath it, right at the surface level, Newsmax is one of the leading racist outfits in this entire country. And so, of course, Nigel Farage would connect with this Trump-laden Newsmax organization because they connect on the white supremacy. They connect so much on their racism that the Americans, right, the the racists here in America are more than happy to side with the monarchy against which we wage the Revolutionary War. Right. So all the time they're sitting here talking about uh, uh, the founding fathers and, and and the American Revolution and the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence was written against the British crown. But they love their racism so much that they're willing to make league with the very people this nation had to declare independence from. Let's take a look at that clip one more time as he tells you (laughs) that nobody has done more for people of color. Rather, (laughs) nobody has done more to (laughs) people of color than the British crown. Look again. Racist, the queen and the royal family have spent the last 70 years touring around the Commonwealth. The vast majority of those people Mm. are black and Asian. I would put it to you, nobody in the world in history has done more for people of color than the British royal family. I'm disgusted, the British people are disgusted, and by a majority of two to one, opinion polls now say we want them stripped of their titles. So, what so a, anyway, what man. a credit at what what y'all did for for <laughs> black people in the past seventy years that y'all are so proud of that you Come feel on. like you got to get on TV and <laughs> talk about it. Yeah, what y'all he did? Sound, what, like what Dwayne did? said, he, he sounds just like Trump's ass. It's just you just no dumb. one has done more for the coloreds than me. <laughs> this is exactly what no he said. Like. Nobody has done anything for the niggas my... than I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, you know, he sounds just like. He sounds just like Donald Trump, right? Because this is what they do. They are rewriting. They're attempting to rewrite history. And, and, and the bad part about it, James, is that it is all they have to do is say it. And yeah. they have enough believers and followers who are going to repeat it. And so now history is being rewritten in real time where they're going to say no one has done more for people. Of and I guess if you let's 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 break it down just a little bit more before we go to a first break. If you consider their perspective they really thought that they were civilizing yep. these savages. So from that perspective, he still believes that they've done more for us because before them, we were uncivilized. Before them, we didn't have culture. 
in their mind before them mm -hmm. this is nigel farage speaking before nigel farage and his original colonizers came and dominated the global south we were nothing but but savages and huts so we should be grateful that this is what he's saying honestly in his heart he believes that by them coming and conquering all these nations killing millions of people destroying families and doing so all for profit he honestly believes that they did us a favor yep tell you what take your favor <laughs> and shove it up your british ass nigel farage take us to a break james we'll come back we'll have more <laughs> like tonight after this <laughs> All right, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed the show thus far, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. We got more like it or not coming up. But until then, we're going to get into some of this good music. Good morning, everybody that's in the chat room. Check y'all out. Good morning. Good morning. Sitting on my six cents. Thought you had us figured I can't use me at your expense. They be on that pretense. We be on some defense. If you in the past tense, you could keep your two cents. I don't want to be another target on a headless. All my people. Good morning, mama. I see you down there in the chat room. Good morning, mama. Good morning. Love you. Can I trust a soul? They gon' turn on you the quickest. Them so much going on. This is what we call our home. They been looting and protesting, trying Sensation, good morning. Body got us like we got us. Like we got us. Streets is in a frenzy. You see the riots. Stand up for a cause. So you die for one of yours. Ain't no universal laws. They just want to sabotage. Rolling with my entourage. And they tell us be safe. But they got our hands behind us while we down up on our face. It don't make sense. JL, good morning. Alicia, good morning. Hope you enjoyed your birthday. Feeling really stressful. Yes, I'm being dreadful. How could we be careful when we ain't really careful? For all of you just need a good mentor. Yes, sit those good morning. Brenda, good morning. Annie, good morning. Esther, good morning, y'all. Government always trying to send, so we at war. Yeah, we black, but we really called more. It's on poor. All we care about is Jordan Concourse. Look at stars. Why you taking things that's not yours? Got to know it, yeah, the honor, George Floyd. Stay on point. Half America is really unemployed. Melanie, good morning. Good morning. Brian, what's going on, brother Brian? All these business burn. Down and destroyed, no insurance. Yeah. Think my people kind of missing what's important. Uh -huh. Yeah, stand up for your rights. Yeah. Brother Chuck Diesel, good morning, good morning. So they Shout out to everybody that's tuning like in on Switch and Facebook as well, too, y'all. Good morning. Parachute. Don't shoot hands up, but they still going to tomorrow. Do it. No good morning, like, man. What y'all doing? Need to come together, all of us to start a revolution. Yeah, this David, good solution. morning. So I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Luke, stop the shooting. We've been living in confusion. I'm getting intense. Using up my six cents. Did you have? Just figured I can't use me at your expense. They be on that pretense. We be on some deep. Afraid defense. not. Good morning. Past tense. You could keep your two cents. I don't want to be another target on a headless. All my people running around the city like some misfits. So I'm steady praying for my brothers like a wish list. Can I trust a soul? They gon' turn on you the quickest. <laughs> Y'all are horrible people. <laughs> Mama Bina, good morning, Mama Bina. Really Latif, what's going on? You and I. I see you fighting, but you still <laughs> Philip, my sister actually started calling me Bubba when I was younger while we were still in Alabama, because I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. Um, so, sister was calling me Bubba for the longest, she was the only one, but then, when I got to college, I was in the band, and my crab name was Bubba. To me, it was just like, I mean, everybody's called me Bubba already, so, but Bubba stuck, and Bubba has been with me for several, several years. Truth the dragon, yes. I appreciate the love. And it's all a bluff. It's all a Hey, Ben, Ben, my mama say I got a breakfast quiche cooking, so when you're done. <laughs> I 
I know, right? And that damn key's good as hell, too. <laughs> I've been thinking, cause I don't it's, wanna waste my yeah. precious time. Always looking for the next best thing, do it on your own. Yeah, savory with, with, with some, a pastry shell. I'm never asking them damn crab names. You see, I appreciate that. The previous song was Reparations by ISO Indies. Reparations by ISO Indies. Dude, I appreciate that you have a good day too. Cat B, good morning. Purple Rain Hearts, what you cooking this morning? Benjamin Dixon and guess who's joining us? Hey. Rebecca! It's hey, me. Come on, it's Rebecca! Me. It's me. Yes. Is, that a sponge, is that a SpongeBob shirt? I see you. Oh yeah. <laughs> it, look at look at look at the um it's the um I'm about to oh, hit. Oh I'm out. Oh I'm about to hit. <laughs> I'm out, yeah. <laughs> I can't I like stand it. her. <laughs> I can't we, stand we, her. You got, you got that at uh, uh Green Briar Mall? No, Man. this I got from. Um, I don't even know what the green. You talking about? No, this I the got. Hood from, ball, the the mall around the way. I'm about to say, because yeah. they, they they have all the best T-shirts. You go right there. In the no, you got to go to park. City Trends where they cost three dollars. Oh $4. yeah, okay, okay. Because you know, uh, you be spending like twenty five. Like I love supporting black folks, but when y'all T-shirts cost thirty dollars, I'm like, okay, I'm. That's why out. I went to. Well, City <laughs> like Trends is pretty black. Is it yeah. black? But it's pretty black. I think depends it's, um, on yes, what city, city trends is yeah, really it's, black. Yeah, it's, 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 city trends. That's where really I go black. to get my, you know, my poetic justice type situations. And um, the earrings is I, a whole vibe. It's a whole circle. Yeah. On Thank the, you. On this your, is your that's twenty two. Is bro. <laughs> she ran. She ran twenty twos on her ears. Bro. <laughs> yeah, the, and every though. time it's so funny. People call them like door knockers, and like uh, yeah. they'll come and they'll put their hands through it. With see, I could do that. They'll put their hands through it and stuff like that. Um, like this is like my signature thing. Like when I'm on the streets, it's the biggest hoops I can find. Mm. And um, if I'm with my natural hair or whatever, I do the ponytail, and they be like, oh, Okay, poetic justice. Yeah, that's been my thing. But Didi's is also a good place. Didi's discount. Um, I go so, there. My mama loves Didi's because Didi's. everything is nothing. Jesus. Like I'm like, you can literally get the outfits that's on Fashion Nova um, if you really are patient enough to go through Didi's. And I don't shop, shop at Fashion Nova, but I've seen like, yo, they're selling this at on on um, line at these different boutiques, like a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, the women are selling them for, and I get it. It's your hustle, it's your thing. But the thing is. The the profit that you guys are making is way like it doesn't it's not mathematically correct like you cannot be I'm um, taking a shirt that's five bucks and they then hustling. doing it spent like ninety dollars sweetie I yeah. definitely got this shirt and then sometimes I also have to go over there to the UK at the white people shops <laughs> like you know um, um, boohoo the UK? and them and the, U- yes, the United I have to go Kingdom shop with them. Uh, okay <laughs> oh that's what they did for black people. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the well, only thing. <laughs> um, I, I um, DD's actually now I'm having memories of DD's. I, I've passed through DD's a couple of times, and I just don't have the the patience to go through all those aisles and and lift. so. So if you got the patience, I guess I guess that's it's a good, good thing. No, DD's is good. It definitely it helped me um, with DD's this, discount, this, right? Yeah, DD's discount. Yeah, it helped me with the decor in my home. I mixed it with some Target stuff. I mixed it with Tar-Jay. some Dollar Tree. Uh, uh, yeah, Target. How do you and say? I, how do y'all? How do y'all say Dollar Tree like Target? Dollar like, Tray. I mixed it with some Target. The Dollar Tray. I love my people. <laughs> I love my people. <laughs> Gwen, yeah. Gwen say y'all anyway. gotta go shopping together. She say you are my child, Rebecca. I love those stores. 
curly. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, mama. Yes, mama. <laughs> oh, we were talking. Speaking of, we were talking about getting the vaccine, and 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 we are actually talking about we need to all just go get it together so we could just get it. Yeah, I heard you guys, and not you saying that you need to put your stomach on the table and say. I'm just, hey, no, I'm like, hey, I'm all, put hey, it right there. Yes. I'm right there. Just Look at me. I'm, 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 I, I'm, in the, I'm in the obese category. Let's get this thing done. I hope I can get the one shot, though, because I'm not trying to like sit The Johnson and, and Johnson, right? Yeah, that's yeah I just what, want the one what shot. I'm shooting for. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'll take what I can get. But uh, Yeah, I wasn't going to get it. I was about to Wendy Williams in and say, I'm not getting it. I don't trust it. But Shut at the same time, me, like I, I heard you saying, um, me having to come home and feel like I don't want to put people in danger because I went somewhere and I got yeah. a quarantine. And I'm yeah. miserable when I'm quarantined. I'm miserable when I stay home. Like I'm yeah. not, like I, um, I'm not mentally. Uh, I can't do this another year. <laughs> yeah, I, I, feel that. That. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. It's it's hard yeah. enough. Like I mean, it's hard enough to do. Everybody has their different ways of of struggling through this pandemic. I couldn't imagine being in a in a place by myself. But at the same time, I often think. People wouldn't want to imagine being in a house with small kids who are just like, you know, <laughs> like living their best life. As far as they're concerned, summer never ended. So I uh, love them. I love my kids. Love y'all. Right. I'm watching. But um, man, when I could get y'all back into school safely. Mm, blessed be the name of us. <laughs> <laughs> and see, that's how I feel. I'm just like, if I'm here by myself, but like the family is like who I always go around. So when I go out and I got a weekend that I DJ, now I can't go see the family again because now I got to wait two, three weeks right. to see what's going on. So yeah, that's why I'm ready to go ahead and get it. Mom and dad yeah. got it. So then once I get it, I'm going to be over there every other weekend. Hmm. Maybe yeah, not, I mean, and, yeah. and it's good. To, it's great to have, you know, like Ben, you were saying, like everybody has their different ways of dealing with it. And we all have our different struggles within the yeah. pandemic, because I couldn't imagine yeah. um, in my mind, I would love to be around family, but then not having your space because you guys have been so to get always mm. together um, yeah. all the time. But then it's like then, you know, for me, it's like I'm just alone. Right. I'm just mm -hmm. alone. So say, mm. you know, me in. Oh boy, get into argument. I'm just alone. I have right. nothing. You know, my friends, everything, all those start to slip away. And not on no like, oh, you know, you see who your real friends are when stuff. It, it wasn't that. They just kind of like everybody just kind of like went their own way. And a year's just, a long time. It, a year's I, a long time. It's just been me. And I, I'm like, I gotta it's get a long out. time. And, right. And, and I knew I, I know how long this is now because I'm having fond memories of of a year ago when we were in a pandemic i'm like wait a minute that was we were having a good time like i'm having memories of the pandemic that lets me know like we've been in this seriously a long time like i'm having a hard time remember oh where were we when we did this you was at home because you were stuck in the pandemic i'm like you know so it, it i can't imagine having to go through another year of this because it just no. fundamentally changes it changes you I don't think any of us are actually the same, right? I think we're totally different people. Matter of fact, you and me, Rebecca, we had to get to know each other all over again in this media space because we had both been in isolation for damn near nine months. <laughs> I'm so like, who like, are you? I'm like, are who you? is this? Like, she told you're me, like, like you're sensitive. No, you're sensitive, but our you're sensitivity, sensitive. no. <laughs> our sensitivity. You tripping? No, was, you tripping? I'm like, nah. You, you, did you, you, did you see how you did that though? Did I you didn't know, think, but did you see how you did that the other? Day? So yeah, yeah like right. I didn't think that you had a problem. I thought we were all right. No, we don't know each other, so we got to get to know each other right. again because right. we become <laughs> different people in these in, in these in this space. I'm more like. I thought, you know, like, I guess because I'm so alone, I'm like, maybe what I'm saying is offensive. I don't have that people. <laughs> you don't have that people, people filter anymore. anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so, you know, what's crazy. The, the beginning of the pandemic was actually a vibe, right? We, what we were doing was, oh, you know, we're going to go out, buy the bottles up, get back to the crib yeah. and just, you know, a, two like, weeks. Two like weeks. a hurricane, like a hurricane party. Remember yeah. Those? Like, like, like a hurricane. Yeah. And, nah, and, and this was a year long hurricane. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. it was stressful. But then we had I, a video came up of me doing the I'm a savage challenge. Mm. And then another one, uh, a video came up of me doing some other one. Um, I don't know. We were doing like snap your fingers. And okay. I was like, girl, what? I was doing that. Then I was walking it out. Me, me. <laughs> and then um, like, <laughs> Then me twerking at a FAMU Zoom party. <laughs> I, I was doing all that. Today, I'm literally just, I'm tired. I'm tired. Mm. Nah, it's, just, right. it's just so, it's so, so different. And I don't think people, you know, I, 
I talk about it all the time, and you and I talk about it too. Like, I, I don't think people realize the impact this last year has actually had on us because we spend so much time online and we don't really realize that we literally disconnected from the rest of the world, right? Like, we don't. When's the last time y'all hugged somebody that's not, you know, when's the last time you hugged somebody that's not in your household? When's the last time you actually went somewhere, you know, that's not, you know, in your household, like these are these are really different times, and I think mm. people have to take into account that mm. they too, like th- those of y'all who are watching us, y'all laughing with us, but we laughing at y'all too. We laughing at each other because we've all gone through this, and we've all have had to separate and be isolated in ways that has fundamentally changed us. So when you said Rebecca about your friends, like you know, it's not mm-hmm. that you know, it's just that you guys are you haven't seen each other in a year or or however many months you haven't we seen grew each other. apart too it's like you just grow it just happens yeah it's like you were, we all were dealing with the pandemic in in different ways, different ways. And, yeah and it just was like dang i'm sorry girl <laughs> i'm i'm moving way into the mountains and if you want to <laughs> visit me you can you know you can. and it was like she she had her own thing going on and then it would just became just that. And and mm. that's my, she was my only friend here. Like, you know, when I say friend, like my real friend, everybody thinks they're your friend, you know, and whatever. Mm. But this was my only friend that I would invite over during the pandemic. We spent the first, what, two months together, like, you know, visiting each other because we were all we had in the beginning yeah. of the pandemic. And then when I moved, um, it was like, girl... That was mm. it. Everybody was just like, I can't mentally take people right now. Uh, I don't know if you have it. Where have you been? I don't care if you're my best friend or not. You know, it was yeah. like those things. And I had to understand those things. And then just kind of like, then we just Do started you- becoming different. You really, it's like um, how uh, generations have been shortened. Like four years is a generation now. Wow. Like, I feel like six <laughs> months is a generation, child. But um, like you really grew. I turned 30 and I feel like I've been aged, even though I'm still Ugh. cute. I feel like I've been aged Five years. years. Yeah. 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 Like I, it's, it's, it, yeah. it did wear and tear on my mental. I'm trying I, not to do my 40. I had to do my 40th. Like you did your 30th. I did my 40th in quarantine. I'm def. I'm trying not to do my yeah. 41st. In, I just can't. Oh, no. Like, no. Yeah, it's no. not. Ha- I'm trying to be on somebody island, baby, with somebody's <laughs> tongue. <laughs> so, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that said, we got, um we got some more news and politics as always that we have to cover. Rebecca, we've been following this Andrew Cuomo thing pretty closely because, well, you were one of the first people to actually give it the kind of coverage that it needed in the first place. Because it's me. It's always me. Um, Governor, <laughs> Governor Andrew Cuomo banned reporters from covering his appearance at a Tuesday event for the state fair siding restrictions and related to COVID. The email came ahead of Cuomo's appearance at the New York State Fair. So the fair just so happens to be where a 2016 incident took place where Mm. Cuomo urged reporter Bethany Cephalo, I hope I did not get that wrong, to eat a whole sausage child. Just saying it is uncomfortable, uh, (laughs) but let's take a look. No excuses. <laughs> you know everyone you know, the time. It's not as easy to eat this in front of all these cameras as you think. Uh, well, that's right. That's now your thing. <laughs> not only do you have to eat the sausage, that's but you all, have to That's part of the, the being the governor, right? Learning well, there is a course the when you get elected to office. They have a course called eating on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she did come out and say um, that she did not feel that that was anything, appropriate. That, you know, yeah, that it was inappropriate. She didn't okay. feel that it was. So um, because she said that, she said it, she didn't feel attacked. And then I know that everybody else still stood their their ground with that. But when I watched it, yeah, if it was me, I would have probably I've been in the room, guys, and I can't even lie. I'm not even on front. Like it's. When I'm in the room, especially in some of these spaces where media professionals are or for other work things, dudes will flirt in a way where they say stuff like that. And I'll just brush it off. But that's me. I'll just be like, all right, whatever. Let's get to this money. Right. Let's do what we need to do. But I, you know, growing up in this game, like getting more mature in this game, I have to understand that some things are inappropriate and I need to be like, sir, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. And um, but I guess for her, she was saying her truth and she said she she didn't feel that that was inappropriate. It didn't bother her. Um, so let me let me let me ask you this. So so this surfaced and it's being circulated as more evidence of his being inappropriate. And so she the the actual journalist that was in that clip said not to her, 
but it's still being circulated as 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 a as a problem. Um, because am, am I hearing you right? Yeah, because every yes, because everyone and this it's interestingly enough, this was I think this video made it made its rounds last week, and okay. um, so everybody was using what she said. Uh, to say, you know, we're just going, we're take blowing things out of the water. Um, but just because she said it was inappropriate, it wasn't inappropriate for her, does not mean that uh, the others felt the same way. So, I, yeah. watching ahead. it, I'm going to be honest with you. I like, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you on this one. Like, I, watching it, it. Listen, <laughs> let's. Mm. Yeah, what you said is 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 plenty because these spaces, these spaces are just like that. I am I am surprised often how many people, how many dudes, sometimes women, sometimes women, but mostly dudes, really don't care that they gonna get a sexual harassment charge one of these days. Like yeah. they really say stuff and they care themselves in ways that um, that I just that like I firmly believe I get caught. Like, cause I, I'm I'm paranoid like that. I'm 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 always thinking. I'm thinking somebody's watching. I'm thinking the feds are watching. So, and that's not just the only reason I don't do these type of things. I'm married. That's the second reason. But, but it's like I'm so surprised at how cavalier a lot of men are in these spaces. I've seen it firsthand. I, I know exactly some of the stories that you're talking about, Rebecca, because we're in some of those same spaces. And I, I've seen people go from I've seen people go from professional to to hella inappropriate in 0.1 seconds and and i'm sitting back in amazement wondering if if they ever really think that they would get caught and that's the vibe that i get from andrew cuomo not necessarily from that clip but just from all the other encounters all the other reports he just strikes me as a powerful man who just felt like he could get away with saying things that are inappropriate and and maybe he thought that oh i didn't actually touch anybody i didn't actually assault anybody but no you're right like at a certain extent like we cannot let these spaces that we have power in and over be spaces where the women around us or hell even the men around us have to feel as though they just have to take these things and oh just brush it off like nobody should feel like they have to just brush these kind of things off but far too often it happens all it, it yeah. happens all the damn time it happens all the time and and that, that's not to minimize it. It's right. not to make it seem as though like it's not important. It was. A, it, I mean, it's a teachable moment for me. I m- may have thought that this was uh, normal because every space that I've been in um, has been that way. And sometimes it's flirting, whatever, whatever. But then sometimes it's like the old creepy guy like <laughs> saying things to me that are hey, very inappropriate. Like, hey, right. <laughs> yeah, like eat that sausage, girl. And then stare at me. Don't do that. Whatever, whatever. Come on. I, <laughs> like that's, that's weird. <laughs> so, but, um, <laughs> but and that's what they do. That's what they do. People be holding them bags and be trying to say like, this is your weight. You want that bag? You, mm-hmm. it's, it just, it just but I ain't the one. Hard. Like I rather, I literally <laughs> rather do it myself, get my yeah. own, that whatever. But anywho, um, it's just one of those things I, I think we have to um, let the women uh, explain yeah. it for themselves and yeah, believe yeah. them. If she said this, that's how she felt, believe that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if it didn't bother her, let's just, let's just, oh, let's just focus on the, as I put on my earrings, like I'm about to fight somebody. Let's just focus <laughs> <Right>. on. Uh, <laughs> let's what just you're focus. not going to do is. <laughs> yeah. yeah let's try these today. women. That's what we're not going to do. But he restricted the, so let's go back to the main story, was the right. fact that he restricted uh, this yeah. area. And that's because there's embarrassment there. There's shame yeah. there. Before, he had all access, baby. Yeah. It was um, it was all access. Uh, you guys have to take this call. Yeah. <laughs> it was all access, though. <laughs> Hey, that's the people watching you. That's I'm telling y'all, it y'all, y'all is. when y'all Girl. get on when y'all get on air, let me tell you something. When y'all get on air, trust me, these people are watching. That said, there's another story we want to cover um about evangelicals, um, Christian mm-hmm. evangelicals, right wing conservatives. Uh there's a shakeup happening in that world that I think is is um meaningful for us to discuss. Beth Moore. One of the most prominent white evangelical women in the country has broken with the Southern Baptist Convention over their support of former President Donald Trump. Now, to me, it's a little too little too late, but I digress. In an interview published on Tuesday in Religion News Science, Miss Moore had the following to say. She said, quote, there comes a time when you have to say this is not who I am. I'm still a Baptist, but I can no longer identify with Southern Baptists. Now, according to experts quoted in the New York Times, Moore's departure will have big reverberations. According to Jamar Tisby, the president of a black Christian collective called the witness, quote, 
Beth Moore has more influence on the cachet of Southern Baptists, especially white Southern Baptist women, the, than the vast majority of Southern Baptist pastors or other leaders. So her leaving is not just about one individual. Now, Mrs. Moore is not a church leader, but instead a very prominent Bible teacher. She has written wildly popular by a Bible study guides and is a well-spoken in front of thousands, as well as spoken in front of thousands as a public speaker in various churches. So to me, this is, again, cool. Glad you saw the light. But Donald Trump was president for four years and yeah. I didn't hear this condemnation during his presidency. Um, now, don't get me wrong. You know, she can she, she come to the light whenever she comes to the light. But it's not just about it can't be limited to just Donald Trump, because the Southern Baptist Convention, along with white evangelicals, conservative evangelicals are still a problem above and beyond Donald Trump. Donald Trump is just was like the most uh, repugnant example of what evangelicals have been for a long time. So to me, I'm like, it's cool that she can step out here and, and make this statement and, and come out against Donald Trump. But Donald Trump, James is gone. He's gone. I mean, right. he's trying to come back and I get that. So shout out to, I mean, it, it's, it's like you could take what you get sometimes. Like this is a cool thing that she's doing now. But to me, it's just, it's too little too late. And, and the problems of the evangelical church still persist. So right. I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts about that, man? Man, you're right. I'm just, you know, I want to know why she did it. And I've never heard like any of her sermons before. But, you know, with those types of evangelicals, this, I don't know. Their message is always that mm. gay is evil. There yeah. you go. Gay is evil. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's the majority of it. Yeah. So no. you know, right. hey, I, I'm just interested to see, you know, how many people are going to follow her. Right. Right. And then back what on do they side. actually like? What are they actually following her for? Right. A because absolutely. Again, it's just it's just not enough to me for you to be anti-Trump because I've seen people who are anti-Trump do a lot of bad crap. Right. And particularly, James, like you're talking about the evangelical church, their number one thing is is like who you sleeping with. And mm -hmm. whether or not you have you, you, you know, a woman has the right to determine what she's going to do with her body. Like that's the only right. that's the only things they care about. And so I would I, I would want to ask her that question. I would want to ask, are you leaving the uh, how, how Rebecca says it, the evangelique? Are you leaving mm -hmm. the evangelical church because of their bigotry or are mm -hmm. you only leaving because Donald Trump was too embarrassing for you? That's right. that's the real question. Rebecca, what you think? Throw you under the bus. <laughs> Look, I was. It was a lot happening just now, but um, it was the job. But um, no, seriously. Uh, in these moments where these um, everyone's leak be speaking and whatever, it's not places where we can really. I can't ever believe none of them. Mm. I can't mm. just because we're saying they're going rogue. Has she? What does this mean that she's now come to had her come to Jesus or his? Who are we talking about? Mm. First of all, because I, I, I'm I'm in on the conversation, <laughs> but I don't know the person. But, uh, um, more uh, Beth, Beth Moore. Moore. Yeah. Okay, her. So I want to make sure I have it right. Um, now she's having her come to Jesus moment or whatever. I don't know if her saying that she no longer um, identifies with Southern Baptist means much because that sounds like some. And no offense to homie that was on the show the other day <laughs> um, when he said, you know, Republicans <laughs> and um, oh, uh, conservatives uh, are Greg. different. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know, it, um, when I see somebody who's let themselves be in this environment for yeah. such a long, like, a long period time. of time, mm -hmm. nothing has changed uh, except for now. You don't like how it's affecting you in some right. way. And right. that's when you decide to, you need to remove yourself from the situation. Right. You will no. always mm. be, you will always be that thing to me. Mm. <laughs> and it, it is, it is about, like you said right there, it is about how it impacted them personally, but are they looking at how they have impacted other people for years, right? yeah. for years? Like we, it, it was 
Southern Baptists. It was evangelicals. It was white Christians, conservative Christians that lynched us before service and after service, went to Sunday school and then went and lynched us. Right. Those are the people that we literally had to fight against for our voting rights, for our civil rights. Right. Jim Crow was was an institution that was thought up by Klansmen and, and, and Klansmen meeting in their Christian churches. So, like, I, I, I appreciate that she is an individual enough to, at this moment, depart ways with them. But that church in particular has a long history of hurting people and doing yeah. it in the name of their God to our it was, detriment. It, it's the it's the um, it's 2016. Right. Let's riff rewind and just go back to 2016 when Donald Trump was mm -hmm. um, won the presidency. Sure. Um, what was that church doing then? Where was she? What was she sitting at? Mm. The front mm. row? Were they praying? Mm. Was were they holding hands and praying, thanking God that He won? Because mm. now we're in 2021, and you are saying that you are removing yourself from this particular church um, because of Trump. Their <laughs> support of Donald Trump. But what happened? 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. What, mm -hmm. what happened? 2020. 2020. Where was she? Where, Where were was you? She? On that side, well, did you? How did you benefit from him being president? Mm. Right. Mm. No, you did. So mm. now mm. something had to happen, and it's probably um, this maybe how COVID was being treated, and it's probably came to your doorstep, maybe affected mm -hmm. a, a person that you know, and now you're starting to see things different. Mm. I don't mind people coming to the light. I'm a very forgiving person, sometimes to a fault, and um, but. In these cases or these particular people, like I would never forgive. I just I don't have it in me to forgive those people who lynched and did all that. I don't. I don't. I don't. I will never forgive those people. Um, but there are people who learn. Right. You mm -hmm. had all this time. Stuff was happening in front of your face. Like mm. you had all this time. And now you decide to leave the church. I don't know why it's such a big deal that you said it, but I guess it's because evangelicals are um, people who, who stand with it, like who will stand in their stand their ground until the day they die. And I think mm. that's why it, it, you know, it seems that it's how a you, rare moment, a gym that we're finding here. How do you, so, how do you say, yeah. how do you say it? It's like, if you were just to say Evangelique. it. Like, Evangelique. <laughs> and I know uh, uh, Professor, Professor <laughs> Anthea Butler, who, who's a regular, uh, she says evangelicals. And I, just for me, I just, I, that's it's hard. Closer. Evangelical. Evangelical. Evangelique. Mm -hmm. Evangelicals. That's what we call them. In Evan the South. Evangelicals, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, somebody else saw the light. Um, somebody from the um, formerly of the black delegation. Uh, we traded her off uh, a couple of years ago. Stacy Dash. <laughs> oh, <has> seen, <laughs> <laughs> what? She, when she's seen the light and she's apologizing and she's you know crying and, and do we and, and take we, her back? I, well, that's right. the question. Wait a minute. <laughs> I feel like, wait a minute, mom. Um, let's play the clip of Stacey Dash seeing, coming to the light of how she was wrong. Uh, and then let's decide as the black delegation what? if we're going to accept her back. Take a look. I've lived my life being angry. You know, I'm, which was what I was on Fox News. You know, I was the angry, conservative black woman. And at that time in my life, it was uh, who I was. And I realized in 2016 that anger is unsustainable. <laughs> and it will destroy you. Okay. That's okay. And, you know, what people don't know is that I made a lot of mistakes. And Man. because of that anger. Man. Being a supporter of Trump, you know, has put me in some <laughs> kind of box that I do not belong in. I don't hate anyone. I don't, you know, I, I don't know where that comes from. And well, I, he's not the president. <laughs> so I'm going to give the president that we have right now a chance. <laughs> Girl, you just want to be for, uh, relevant. I was about to say something else with an F in it. We're not saying, we're just, not, she's not coming back. Girl, uh, she's not coming back. She is not, not welcome. Because at the end of the day, like when I look at that and I hear her, it's like she wants to be received because if she's received now, she will be in the, the places where she can get work. And, I, and mm -hmm. um, it's harder mm -hmm. for the black women 
who support Trump to start getting work again mm. when they work mm. in entertainment than it is for the black men. The black men could Chris say do whatever Michelle. and still exactly. And the black men could say and do whatever and still be loved. Uh, merchandise purchase, rap album still, you know, skyrocketing. Mm. But that's you know, I ain't gonna get oh, into that. You talk about them. Uh, you talking about like the Kanyes and the Lil Wayne's and them and, who, and, who yeah, they and still the Kodak Blacks and, 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 and all yeah. of them. Yeah. He needs mm-hmm. to get out, so he had to make you know make his rounds and 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 Lil Wayne wanted to be pardoned and de- so they wanted to make closer. But Easy. some of them, some of them even before. Or like they've been um, saying what benefits them at, with Donald Trump in office um, and, you know, saying that they are separate from <laughs> the black struggle uh, and things like that. Um, but anywho, I was, uh, I'm looking at the comment section. People say, was she was she 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 was she on drugs yeah. in that interview? <laughs> I'm like, first I, of all, my audience, y'all, are, y'all, 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 our audience is ruthless. Number one. Number two. Yes. <laughs> Yes, not I, a tear, I, not I, a tear though, like, not, a, not tear. a tear. With the, with the napkin, t- she was you know dabbing her eyes and her nose, but those weren't tears. She looked she great. Dabbing. She looked mm. she looked beautiful. She was giving dewy skin, you know, early summer spring vibes. Um, mm-hmm. Nice honey colored <laughs> hair. Um, she been flying. She been flying she, she since been, clueless. But that wasn't enough for me, baby. I mm-hmm. need like you. Amarosa is a different person, and I'm gonna tell you why. Mm, because Amarosa really, was oh. like, let me try to get in here and get me a check. But, mm-hmm. you know, let me try to get in here and do that. But Amarosa is still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amarosa is still someone. We apologize, guys. I know every time I watch them, we just everybody just talks at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dwayne talking to us. But, um, <laughs> but Amarosa is someone who, um, to me. I hate to say it, but when stuff hits the fan, she can, let me tell you something. She's dragging she everybody it. down. Oh, yeah. Everybody, you yeah, know, yeah. and then she, the way that she dragged uh, Bethany Frankel and, 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 um, oh yeah, you talk, saw that clip. We're oh, talking about, yeah, for talking about, um, being a woman in the space. And she mm-hmm. was like, sweetie, you can never be me. I'm a black woman. And this is what my struggle looks like. It does not look like yours. You know, okay. clear. <laughs> she always clears the room, even if she's like a very unlikable person. She mm-hmm. stands in her truth, but then, like, yeah. at the same time, she's that black Republican that will find other black women in the room and be like, I see you, I see you, I see you. Stacey right. Dash is somebody to me that will, like, she just, she didn't have the information. She didn't have the bandwidth. She does mm. not have it. She and now have she wants to come back and be <laughs> safe. Omarosa never said I wanted to come back. Omarosa right. is like, I did it. I did mm-hmm. it. And I do I it messed again. Up and I, yeah, and I do it again. <laughs> Saying, I there's, do it there's, again. Very, there's very few people in these spaces. There's very few people in these spaces that I actually don't want to smoke with. Omarosa is one of them. Like, like the, there are certain people that you just don't win up against. Um, Omarosa is one. I'm not even going to do the vote based on Omarosa being welcome back into the black delegation. I want to ask the audience. He's just pulling up. To break. And all that, as we get ready right. to go to break, and we'll come back with our first guest in the chat room. Uh, if you are a part of the black delegation. <laughs> Do we accept, uh, not Omarosa, wasn't it? Stacey Dash. Do we accept Stacey back, Dash back into the black delegation based on this tearful, uh, this tearful video interview? Uh, leave it in the comment section. And when we come back with more Like It or Not after this break with James, we'll cover it. <laughs> All right, no, my answer going to be, God damn it. <laughs> Shout out to everybody. Make sure that y'all are hitting that like button, y'all. Make sure that you hit that like button, y'all. Keep you, babe. Oh, to keep you, babe. Do, do, do. Now I hurt so bad. All I feel is sad that I lost you, babe. Well, y'all is running it up in this chat room, man. Kids inside, calling out your name as you shut the door behind you. And now I wonder why won't you come back? Take my hand and let me have this dance. 
Y'all make sure that y'all are hitting that like button, hit that like button, hit that like button. And make sure that you share, comment, and subscribe too, all right, y'all? Without you, babe. Big N, Lil O. I miss you, babe. Yeah, I miss you, baby. I said goodbye with kids inside. Sensation, this is let me have this dance. You shut the door behind you. Yeah. And I wonder why won't you come back? I'll let you know who it's by, but it's called Let Me Have This Dance. Need me like the way you used to do when it was just me and you. Alexa, play Cardi B up. Try to get us, try to get our internet shut off by, by YouTube by getting the games you getting, play. The games oh, you play. Oh goodness! Listen, let me let me let me before we go into this, let me introduce uh, Ahmed Baba, who's the co-founder, president, and editor in chief of Rant Media, also a columnist for the British newspaper The Independent. Brother, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you is: Do we accept? Uh, Stacy Dash back into the black <laughs> delegation. What do you think? No, no way, no way. The black delegation is not having that. What the black delegation should do is commission the trade. Now, I think we should mm-hmm. we could trade Stacy. Who do y'all think? I'm thinking maybe you know we got Eminem. I mean, some easy low hanging <laughs> fruits we can trade. Yeah, right? uh, Eminem is too easy. Um, right. Yeah. I, you know, and it's crazy because this new generation. Look, every time the new generation, this new generation, you're getting um, old, Rebecca. Right. Um, has has given us stuff like Bad Baby, the girl that did. Uh, what is that? The um, Catch me, me outside. outside. How about that? Catch yeah, me outside. that one. Yeah. And yeah. they've given us yeah. e- even this new girl from that Uber video that we saw oh, may goodness. become somebody as well. They've given us like Kim Kardashian. These people are no, we don't, we don't want them. Not to say that they're like Kim Kardashian is a fly woman, but she can't come to the cookout just cookout. because she married to a black man. True. So I don't know what I don't know who it would who be. Would I really, I, we, that's that's a good question. We got to really, really think about that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I take I. I know it's not the kind of trade we normally would trade for uh, someone from the Caucasus Mountains, but I would take Omarosa <laughs> back um, and they could keep Stacey Dash uh, just because like, I like having the most cutthroat person on our team. She like, real. She, she will. She'll yeah, she's got that like, tactician's mind. You know, she can like, oh, she can help. She can help some scheming, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, she's a master at that. So I, I, it's an overwhelming no from the chat room. So I'm sorry, Stacey Dash, your tearful uh, <laughs> video. Like, we, we don't want you back. Stay it better be you. only coming from black folks. Well, that's why I qualified it. Like we love, we I love, I love my non-black audience. We appreciate you, but we only needed black delegation on that one. That said, brother, hey, listen, I, I, I've been watching your work for some time um, with Rant Media. Could you tell us about that platform and what uh, inspired you to start it? Well, first off, thanks for having me on because I mean this show is is pretty it's pretty lit. I mean, if you played up before this, you would have caught me, you know, dancing on that <laughs> on that screen when it was because I was I was caught off guard. I was jamming when yeah. the camera came up. So I appreciate the show, but I mean, Rand in general. So 
what we're trying to do is, I mean, as you know, for the past four years, we're really kind of focused on, um, you know, kind of uh, just opposing authoritarianism was our baseline. But really in this next era, we're really trying to create community through common understanding. And the way we're doing that is through content that combats disinformation. We want to make sure we're trying to create an environment where there's a set of commonly agreed upon fact, because that's really the biggest, one of the biggest challenges we face right now is that people are living in, well, there's one side living in objective reality, and then we have the other side talking about Jewish space lasers and yeah. Trump being inaugurated every other week. So mm-hmm. really our focus is disinformation, and we're trying to see how we can bridge bridge some of these gaps in uh, the information space. Mm. Well, the, the How? how? <laughs> because that's a big one. Right. You're striking <laughs> yeah. to you're striking to the core of the fundamental problem that we have right now. The fact that there's two alternate universes happening, coexisting in the same place. Those people who mm-hmm. don't believe mask, uh, they believe masks are, are, are an infringement on their freedoms and they don't believe science. You know, how how are you and your company actually making inroads into that? Because that's a difficult task that you've taken on. Yeah. So, I mean, what we're trying to do really now is really shift. Uh, to a more uh, approach where we can pull people in who have felt as if they've been, you know, just disillusioned, right? So what we do now is we do a lot of extremism focused content. So we'll go to the core of why people become radicalized, what rabbit holes they go down, and we try to create content. We have a partnership with this company called the Center for Analysis of the Radical Right. Um, They're actually based in the UK. And we publish uh, extremism based content around that in which we go to the core of it and say, hey, look, this is the point where people get radicalized. This is where they start going on these conspiracy theory rabbit holes. And what we want to do in the future is start to interview former like QAnon folks, former people who went down these this path, because that's what's important. You have to show people have been self radicalized. So we have to get them to self de radicalize and like Mm -hmm. reverse engineer their how they fell into this, you know, and that's kind of what I mean, it's a big shift when we were doing just kind of going hard at Trump the last few years, but now we really want to see how we can be really productive and take on this challenge. We're still working on it, obviously. Yeah. So um, I see that you talking about this. Yes, we're having to shift, um, especially in these spaces from talking about Trump and being, you know, going hard on on speaking about him all the time, every day, whether it was a dumb tweet or a name that he made up. Um, but uh, you, I see that you said that you documented Trump, most of the pre- his presidency, um, his entire pres- yeah. presidency, and you stayed sane. Tell us about that. Mm. Well, you know, I stayed sane. I didn't keep my hair. But as we know, <laughs> uh, you know, Ball Black Bearded Squad is a place to be, as Benjamin knows. It's, you know, it's, it's the place to be. You're in good company. Yeah. 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 You're absolutely place to be, right. So yes, sir. Uh-huh. It worked out. It worked out. But... You know, yeah, I mean, documented the presidency. So essentially after the Muslim ban came, it was just a flurry of activity. Me and my you know, co-founder, Zach, and um, you know, Adam, and we, we were kind of, there's such a flurry of activity and we were already doing this new, new news company. I was like 24 at the time. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, there's so much activity. Let me just start documenting everything that happened. So it turned from one week column into a four year column, which is now like mm. a, database that you can click into every week and see literally everything that happened every day and analysis of what happened. And it's, it was a journey. Uh, it was, it was wild. Um, and I, I don't know how I stayed sane, but I'm just happy to be, I'm happy. I didn't have to do four more years of it. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and now you have ramp media. So definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell us in terms of like your, your strategy uh, going forward with rent media. And, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is because a lot of times in these independent media spaces, we're in silos and we are all aiming for some of the similar goals. Um, but without us cross pollinating each other's audiences, we're on our own. And there's just not there, there's the, the resources. I know you've run into this and I'd like for you to talk about it. The lack of resources and funding, particularly for black independent media. Um, what are your what are your strategies around some of those things, as well as some of your goals for your company? Yeah, man, as, as you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard out here to to get, uh, you know, funding for, for for black businesses, let alone black mm-hmm. media companies, um, or, you know, minority owned media companies, my co- you know, we're most of my co-founders also, you know, half Arab. So, you know, it's, it's tough, but basically we've done a lot of uh, 
subscription based. So we used to do, we used to have ads. Um, and then we said, Hey, we don't want to be polluted by that. We want to create content for you and be able to, you know, not have to race to do clickbait. As you'll see, we don't, we, we publish, we take our time on our articles, make sure we got, you know, a solid, uh, meaningful approach. And essentially what we focused on is subscriptions. And that's really been what is, what has driven us. Um, and that's, that's really the key. And as you can see, like even Twitter, everybody knows, everybody's trying to like Substack. Um, yeah, everyone's now yeah. trying to inch towards that subscription model because it's the way to build sustaining sustainable revenue that doesn't really get impacted by, you know, uh, the, the market and advertising dollars going up and down. Mm. So, um, when you, we know the struggle, uh, yeah. when it comes to you talking about us being in this space by us, minorities, black yeah. media being in this space, um, it, we don't, we get the, the short end of the stick. So, um, when, you know, when you say subscriptions, how, how has that been going for you in the, in this moment? And I only ask because there was a time where it would have probably been going good, but in this day and age, it's kind of like we, no matter how hard we do it, it's kind of like we're, we're at the, we're at the end of it where mm. a lot of, um, white media are doing the same things that we're doing and, um, they get it. In two seconds, they'll get so much money or or uh, so Flush. much push. But for some reason, it almost feels like like we just I don't know something is missing for us. Do you feel the same? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you know you you feel like you're hitting these roadblocks, and then especially when you look at sometimes pre idea companies, it seems getting like a billion dollar valuations. <laughs> and uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, you got you got Clubhouse built by the black community. Um, I've actually been doing a lot of reporting on that aspect and like talking to uh, some of the like Portia Bell, some of the people on Clubhouse that are doing activism for the black community there. Um, but it's like you see these platforms that are run by, you know, non-black people that a lot of times built by black people getting um, getting funding. But when it comes to media specifically, yeah, I mean, it is difficult. You know, when it comes to subscriptions, it's been going well. I mean, we we had, you know, we, built, we bring them into a community it feels, uh, you know, we have a newsletter. Um, et cetera. And we've been doing it. We did things for free for so long uh, that I think over time, our you know, audience and, and people really, they believed in what we did and said eventually, hey, you know, we'll, we'll subscribe. And I know it's tough and it's hard to hard to get into, but, you know, it took a long, long, long time for it to get really to get legs. Um, you just had to just had to keep at it nonstop. But, um, you know, uh, that's the way to do it. But it's looking like, you know, with, with what you, you all have here, I mean, what you do on YouTube, I mean, this is great. I'm sure you're going to have some sponsors rolling in here because, I mean, I haven't seen a morning, like a real morning show vibe like this on, 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 you know, really any platform, especially from, you know, from the black community. Stop it. Yeah. I know we good. We are. We are. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Rebecca, Rebecca, you know, I'm going to roast you real good. It's a little bit. No. <laughs> let me, let me, let me stay focused. <laughs> All the way live, Rebecca. Uh, I, 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 one of the other reasons I wanted to bring you on is because you also operate in these, um, in heavily in the political spaces, but as as individual person with a voice, right above and beyond what mm -hmm. you do with your media company. I wonder. I, I want to ask you, like, how has your experience been in terms of your politics, your blackness? You're unapologetically mm. black. You're unapologetically progressive. And sometimes those things, those things come to backfire on you if, if you're not careful, because the more outspoken a black person is, particularly black men, the more uh, reticent the, the media community is or just the broader political community is in terms of embracing you as an individual. Have you faced some of those same um, impediments? Yeah, I mean, especially, uh, you know, earlier, right? Like before it became, you know, more trendy to be this way. As we know, like once... Last summer hit, everyone's posting black squares and suddenly everyone's a activist. But uh, mm. like it, it was it was harder in the earlier days. Right. Like especially 2014, like we started mm. rant in 2014. Um, mm -hmm. It has been a long time coming. Like so I was 21, like my whole 20s is spent on this. And we were talking about these issues back then. It just wouldn't get traction. Right. And then I remember specifically in 2016, I remember Adam Serwer posted about this, too. And I'm sure you all were doing the same thing. But during that time when we were saying, look, Although, of course, all Trump supporters aren't, aren't racist, but you have to ignore a lot of racism in order to support him. We were saying, hey, the, it's not economic anxiety media. You know, it's mm -hmm. not, this is not an economic anxiety. This is, 
this is white supremacy kind of at the core of this. We've seen these rallies. We're black in these spaces. And then people were laughing it off in 2016. And, and then you see over time, it took, it, it, you know, when you're trying to speak that voice, a lot of the times, you know, you, one of the things that made it good is that just the, uh, the, the, the people on Twitter, and especially the, just our audience. And as you, as you've seen, when the people are with you, it's kind of makes the, you know, the, the media kind of pay more attention. I think they've improved a lot since 2016. Um, just because in, in general, when you're being unapologetically black and calling something what it is, saying it's white supremacy or saying this lie is a lie or saying, you know, black lives matter before it was, you know, cool to do so. It's like you said, sometimes people try to, they will, they'll try to marginalize you or say, Hey, you know, it's, uh, you know, you get ahead of your skis here as you've probably, you thought both of you have Facebook, something like this, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh no. yeah. You run into- On a, it's, it's, it's the phenomenon of where, they want your voice, but they don't really want what you have to say. They want that black voice to say what they want to hear. They don't want that black mm-hmm. voice to say what that black voice wants to actually say. We we've been we've been facing that like not since I was twenty one. Like, how old are you, brother? You you ain't even thirty yet, is it? <laughs> I'm I'm twenty. I'm twenty eight. Yeah. Man, you out here in these streets hitting it hard at twenty eight. So <laughs> like like yeah. honestly, but but from the very first entry point into this political space. We, Rebecca, I know you can speak to it. We face that same phenomenon. They want our faces, but mm-hmm. they don't want our voices. It, it's it's exactly our testimony. Every time we get on here, we <laughs> and because we um, pride ourselves in bringing on, I mean, guests of color, particularly black guests. Um, we want to make mm-hmm. sure this is a safe space for black people. Yeah. Um, and when we bring them on, they understand the same thing. It's like we've all experienced that. That yeah. you know. The, and I want I want the white folks money. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I want that money. But when we they, we when we um, accept it and they put us in these spaces, they really just want our look. They mm. want to put us on because it is something that will fall into the box of diversity and inclusion. Mm. Ugh. And then they want to shut you up if you are discussing too much of a certain or particular black subject Respect. that they may person not, may not personally align with what they believe in. Um, but it's like. This is, has no business to do with you. And I, it would be a disservice to me as a black person in media not to speak on this. Right. Uh, but don't tell them that because they don't like that. They do not like it. And that's when you decide to walk out of that and, and walk away from money. Yeah. And do it yeah. yourself, which is what, what we have here and which is what you have um, with Rant. So exactly. un- unapologetic spaces are very important because we don't have to water down what the true story is. Right. This is our story. This is our narrative. This is how, this is what it is. And um, yeah. I think, yeah, it's important. I always say this with all the, all y'all that come on this show, <laughs> every one of you guys have an important role in this space because right. of you, mm-hmm. the stories are told correctly because of you. Exactly. And especially because uh, they, we're not, um, they think that we're just getting on and cutting on the TV. This is not a, Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. No, this is not that. A lot of uh, people have, okay. have the experience to be in yeah. these spaces, whether a journalist or been doing the reporting or a lot of people have that. And mm. that's why I think that, um, they try to make it harder for us because we're not just coming in and just giving opinions. A lot of us have been covering this stuff for years. This, this, is, this so, is our life. Yes. This, this yeah. is, is this for you? Is this more of a, is this your life versus a career? Um, because I, we run into the other thing is we run into oh, yeah. a lot of people who occupy these spaces as a career versus people like us and you covering this because these stories really represent what's happening in our lives. Could you speak to that? Well, exactly. I mean, I think really it's, it's, it's my life. And that's the thing. It's an obsession. I mean, um, it's really, you have to, you have to be, when you're doing anything, you know, any kind of entrepreneurial initiative, you have to believe in what you're doing and be in love with it. But mm-hmm. like really what moved me into this, I mean, I'm my co-founder, Zach, I've actually been friends with him since we were seven. And we used to talk about this all the time as kids, but like once I got older and then like Trayvon Martin, once yeah. Trayvon Martin um, got killed, I was, he was like two years younger than me. He kind of looked like me at the time. You know, I had a full head of hair at the time too. You know, <laughs> I, that did happen. Uh, he looked like me a little bit. And then I, I was struck, right? And then that, I got roped in. That was when I really, I was already, always, you know, paying attention to news, but then I got really roped in. And then I was in a work, I was in a t- uh, tech, I worked in tech and I was, I worked at a tech company and people were debating the, the, the trial and it was, you know, a lot of the you know people having these these opinions in the media was I saw the way the media criminalized him. And I remember Eric Garner when that was happening. And, you know, all of that, that's kind of what started to move me to want to get into media because I realized the power of it. 
and how important yeah. it is shaping these narratives, shaping our story, shaping our truth. Whenever a black man is killed, he gets his mugshot is on the TV. But if it's if the white person is doing the shooting, they show some photo of him and his family. And I saw that and I was like, this is wrong. Um, and, you know, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to get into this uh, and mm. to, to try to be because the lens is the media is a lens through which people perceive reality, as we all know. And it's mm -hmm. been held by people who were just focused on ratings and, you know, mm. they, false equivalency games and just not focus on integrity. And it was obviously because of advertising dollars and corporate forces, but it's not impossible to do this and still have your integrity. And that's at least what we're trying to prove um, by doing what we do. Mm. Well, thank that's you so much for that, Ahmed. Let us know where people can find you um, and where your website is so that people can come and stalk you <laughs> and follow you on Twitter. <laughs> Okay, um, so you can you can find me on Rant Rant Media, um, Rant with two T's, uh, Media, and um, at Ahmed Baba underscore. You can see on the screen there. Uh, I'll be on there. You can talk to me on Twitter, and uh, we'll, we'll communicate. I appreciate y'all having me on here because the show is a vibe for sure. And um, you know, just speaking speaking the black truth is so important. And you know, as we rise throughout these spaces, let's let's keep in touch and just uh, do yeah. what we do. That's a fact. Oh, definitely. We'll definitely keep in touch. Make sure you have you back on the show. Everybody, make sure you go follow him on all his handles. And we'll be back with more Like It or Not right after this. All right. Thank you so much, Amanda Baba, for joining us this morning, y'all. I can't stand y'all. Thank you so much. I'm feeling something special for you. And now you got me oh, till the sun comes up. Daylight Don't y'all stalk our man too much, okay? Because y'all in the chat talking and crazy. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I promise I didn't do anything. It wasn't me. I'll be waiting. I'm just a couple steps from going over the moon. I want to move with your body, baby. Re Rebecca. I want to move with your body, baby. Mara. Move with your body, Mara, Mara, Mara. Mara. Mara and Chase in the chat room. That's all I'm going to say. Love. And the heart, yes. Y'all is trying to stalk the man already. <laughs> Melody.
Diana, I appreciate it. <laughs> Always, every morning. <laughs> Is this what you want now? Feels like you're looking for something better. This dude that I love y'all, okay? Uh-huh. Y'all are crazy. I love all of y'all. <laughs> Is this what you want now? Hey man, make sure that y'all are hitting that like button, hit the like button, hit the like button, uh-huh. comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, y'all, okay? I can't keep pretending. Benny Loco, thank you, sir. It's Sean Jones. <laughs> Can't give you what you need. Don't misbehaving. Yeah, it's getting to me. Mara say she'll be a cougar. It's never ending. You can give anything. So you can go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Yeah. So I can focus. I just need to focus on myself. Love you too, Anna. I really do. This is what I want now. And yeah, I'm waiting for something better. This is what I want now. Mama, thank you. I know I'm special, Mama. Thank you. Said I'm special, y'all. Can't give you what you need. No, no. You're misbehaving. Yeah, it's getting to me. It's not the ending. For privates, ain't they out today? Love you too, mama. Love you too. Make sure that y'all are hitting that like button wherever you are streaming right now. Make sure that you hit that like button, y'all. And share, comment, subscribe. Chuck Diesel, <laughs> the quarantine cougar energy. Martha, I'm so sorry. Noah, don't have a playlist that you can download from this music, but you can download and go to mixcloud.com slash djx3c or soundcloud.com slash djx3c um, and get my other mixes. Those will find the regular mixes with the copyright music. So you should check that out, definitely. But with this music, eh. You can see it on the show, that's about it. <laughs> Chase away your shadows Away from the crowd I give you my tomorrow Forever now Spotlight from my cell phone Nick, Sounds this is Forever like and Now, Catnip featuring Aja. I can choose where you go Seven, sweetheart, I appreciate that. Big C on the moon, good morning. Talk all night long. <laughs> Show me affection, attention, and care. Losing attention, and baby, I swear. My pleasure, Martha. Tomorrow, forever now, I'll never bring you sorrow. So don't let me down. Chase away your shadows Away from the crowd 
some honey stocks. I finally stopped running now. With you I found my peace somehow. Let go of every thought that was holding me back. Yeah. I'm in love with you in every way. The joy you give me every day. Makes me forget that I was troubled before. So you're welcome. I see your face. I never knew you could love someone like me. This is like this by you Spring Game. Me free. Free. Moon. I With you, if you want me now. I know you do. I know you'll be patient and I love you for all that. You show me how to dare to love. I can't stand y'all, man. All right, y'all. It's time for more like it or not. Back to Rebecca and Ben. Joining us now, uh, it's Kamal Franklin, who's the founder and board president of Community Movement Builders and a dedicated community organizer for over 20 years, along with Kalanji Changa, uh, who's an award-winning political activist and the founder of a national coordinator of the social justice organization, FTP Movement. And they're both co-hosts of the longtime political podcast, Renegade Culture. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Like It or Not. How are you doing? Doing good. Good Excellent, of absolute pleasure. I, I had I had a chance to come on your show um, back during the election, and um, I I knew and, and actually Kamal, I've I've known your work here in Atlanta uh, for some time. Um, tell us about the two of you, your activism and the the collaboration that you're doing with Renegade Culture. Kamal, I'll start with you. Um, well, you know, we've known each other for a few years through organizing in activist circles. Uh, I would call them like self-determination circles, organizing in the black community, um, both, you know, doing our own thing. And a few years ago, we decided to sort of join up and to create sort of an umbrella organization called the Seattle Movement, where we took our different formations um, and basically formed sort of an alliance um, where we decided to do uh, community work together, youth programming, uh, organizing uh, rallies, uh, infrastructure building. And I think even part of what came out of that in terms of developing our friendship uh, was Renegade Culture, which became our podcast and sort of sort of a signature way in which we sort of talk to a larger audience. So, you know, we've been rocking with each other for a couple of years. Sometimes people are a little shocked to see us together, you know, because I'm so, you know, handsome and debonair and all that kind of stuff. And I'm running with Kalanji. So, you know, that kind of stuff, I have to put them down, let them know that my man is cool even though I, I got to carry things sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love it. Kalaji, uh, on, on, the, on, the, on Renegade um, culture, like you guys, y'all not playing around with this thing, right? Y'all, you guys cut straight to the core of the matter. You talk about whether or not socialism is good for black people or you, you cut to uh, the rights of black people to bear arms. It has a revolutionary perspective. Talk about the, the, the podcast and the show. Oh, man. The uh, podcast is... Um for us, it's a, a tool for liberation. You know what I mean? We, we like to use uh, 
what we call the cherry cough drop theory. We make it taste so good that folks will get his medicine. You know what I mean? So um, Money. we are we are organizers and freedom fighters first. Uh, we use whatever form of creative resistance that we can to uh, you know to get our point across. So uh, renegade culture is you know I mean it, it fits because the renegades in his culture. You know, and we, mm. we you know we love our job. So we want to you know share the share the love with other people in a way that uh, you know everyday people can understand. You know, and dig. yeah, yeah. yeah. I love the um um the the, the analogy like you it, you make it so good that people don't realize that they're getting their medicine <laughs> um because that's that's uh talk about the 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 hesitation and the reticence that you get or the pushback that you get from even in black the black community right because it, it's not we're not just fighting for liberation against white supremacy we're fighting for liberation against white supremacy that's embedded in the minds of even black people uh, i don't know which one of you want to take that but uh speak to that for me i'll, I'll let the i let the less attractive guy go first <laughs> <laughs> um i mean i would say you know when we you know, we are decidedly radicals, right? We are decidedly in a, in a certain camp that um, it doesn't mean we won't have fuller discussions with everybody in terms of different ideas and ideologies within a larger black community. Um, but we come at it from a certain uh, vantage point of we are for the self-determination of our folks. If there's a, uh, an institution or organization that has power over our people, we need to control that institution, control that organization, control that political entity, what we need to destroy it or get it off our backs. So, you know, we don't, we don't, we're not wishy-washy when it comes to, you know, what we think um, needs to happen for our liberation, right? Uh, so we get pushback, I would say, uh, uh, obviously conservatives, but, you know, more, probably more surprisingly, maybe even less surprisingly, I guess, from like liberals, right? Not only white liberals, but black liberals. So we get folks who are like sort of tied into the apparatus of the Democratic Party to where they can't separate themselves and the needs of black people from the Democratic Party. Um, mm. And some folks we work with um, who work strategically within the Democratic Party, but there are others who they see the black struggle as one in, one in the same. Uh, they mm -hmm. see whatever is good for the Democrats must be good for black folks. And we don't mm. think that is the mm. history that we as a people um, can point to that says that whatever the Democrats want or need, it doesn't necessarily uh, match up with what our needs are as a people. And so, you know, that sometimes becomes a, a rub um, for us mm. talking about, like, you know, the, the, what Joe Biden represents, right? We think mm -hmm. Trump obviously represents a certain overt form of white supremacy. We think Biden represents mm. a more subvert uh, type of white supremacy, but still it's white supremacy. Um, so it doesn't mean we don't have to deal with these folks in these politics, but we have to have a certain vantage point, again, in, in thinking of what it is that we want to get out of the system as opposed to being co-opted by it. Right. So, I think um, to add on to what, I'm sorry. No, go so ahead. I'm going to say to add on, to add on to what Kamal was saying. I think that uh, you know we represent a sect of the community that's often ignored, um, and I think that even within the quote unquote grassroots organization organizing communities, we are somewhat um, outcast because we have an unorthodox style of organizing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're not politically correct because the politics aren't correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, our, our style is, is, is it, it's more brazen. It, it's, uh, I, I guess it can be compared to, um, I would say, a cross between uh, an NWA and a public enemy if you were talking hip hop. You know, okay. we, we, we come with that, that raw, uh, uncut, uh, that, that the masses can feel, that the, the lumping can, can uh, unite with. But at the same time, you know, we, we were able to dibble and dabble in all types of different circles. So with Renegade Culture, when you check it out, you might see uh, former Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney one day. The next day, you might see Killer Mike on there. Um, yeah. You may see a uh, speech from the rest of development. The next day, you might see a, you know, a grassroots gun club from, from Louisiana. You know, yeah. so we try to, you know, hit all angles, you know, from... The, the quote unquote elders or what we call the OGs, the original gorillas to, you know, to the youth, you know, because we think that it's important for us to, you know, leave no, no, uh, no stones unturned. Mm. I mean, that's pretty big. You guys, um, and a lot of people might call that a radical 
thing, right? You got you said NWA, that NWA. That's pretty radical um, for a lot of people. But mm. the the thing that you're doing, uh, the organizing, is still very important. It doesn't matter because some people may not like how it's uh, uh, packaged. You know, a lot of Democrats like things to be packaged a certain kind of way. Um, and uh, you mentioned something. You don't. You guys aren't wishy washy. And when it comes to Joe Biden. Um, it, he 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 gives a wishy washy vibe, and you said that you know he he gives uh, he still gives a form of white supremacy. When you do state things like that, um, is there is there pushback from other people who are organizing who who don't want to organize with you guys because you speak these you speak the truth, um, what I call the truth about uh, Joe Biden? I mean, I would say, I mean, yeah, we I mean we are old school organizers, so we know all the folks. And sort of the grassroots circles, folks who've been around most, you know, 20, 30 years. Uh, some are still friends, some are not, you know, because that mm. stuff happened. But, you know, we know all those folks, some of the folks we've been become sort of celebrity activists and organizers at this stage, right? Um, so there's definitely folks that uh, I would say individually don't mess with uh, me anymore because, you know, I, I think there's mm. got to be an opportunity to talk about movement capture, right? an opportunity to talk about, uh, we know everybody Everybody needs resources to do this kind of work, that's, uh, that's understood. But when we so closely align our politics with, again, what's needed within the Democratic Party to win elections, sometimes we forget that those same Democrats also voted for welfare reform that mm -hmm. devastated our community, or they also voted to bring in the prison industrial complex, which devastated our community. Uh, that mm -hmm. they've also worked close hand in hand with white supremacists, that their international politics are around hegemony and keeping white supremacy and European control of resources and nation states under the U.S. system. So all mm -hmm. those things, those those so those those differences, which may matter somewhat on the ground, a little bit here and there, don't for us outweigh the larger context in which the Democratic Party operates um, and our our um, challenge to them, sort of vis a vis opposition in the United States as an oppressed people, um, as a people who uh, come from a place where we need to resist, um, not only what the Republicans are throwing down, but the Democrats are throwing down, because in the end, they're interested in maintaining their power, their wealth, their system, and we have to be interested in maintaining our right to self-determination, gaining power, and controlling resources in our own institutions and organizations. Hmm. <laughs> I... I I love that talk, man. I love that because mm -hmm. it cuts the core of the reality. Um, the reality that we're not just fighting against white supremacy in the form of the Republican Party, but they're obviously and clearly very transparently is white supremacy in the Democratic Party. What bugs me out about this, though, is that it, it is it is a game. It's a, it's a game to so many people where as long as their team is in power. Yeah, I mean, I voted for Joe Biden because I wanted to get rid of the white supremacists in chief. But it took less than five days of him in office for me to realize, oh, we're going to have to fight just as hard against Joe Biden as we fought against Donald Trump. And yeah. it's like we, we're dealing with an entire like sometimes I feel like this this fight is hopeless because so many people are wrapped into the overly simplistic thing of if my guy is doing it, it's fine. If Barack Obama is dropping drones, that's fine. If if yeah. Kamala Harris is going to be, you know, dropping some pink and green drones, then that's fine. How do mm -hmm. we separate that? Like, like it's, it's an ongoing challenge that has been going on for years. But how do you guys strategically strike at that 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 false dichotomy that so many people are wrapped up in? Again, you know, our, our tagline is sucker free news, politics and social commentary. You know what I mean? So. You know, by default, you know, we we have to come, you know, heavy like a Chevy. You know, we, we got to bring it to them the way it is because of the fact that I think that uh, our, our people are in the, you know, they suffer from the illusion of inclusion. You understand know what I'm saying? Mm. They think that, you know, at some point, you know, if we just, you know, it's, it's like playing this thing away. You know, we can, it, it's almost like, you know, when, when, when folks smoke, you know, or, or drink, you know, you're, mm. you're trying to get high, you're trying to, you know, get to another scene or whatever for the time being. But when that high goes down, you're still in the same conditions that you started out in. Um, mm. You know, we are abolitionists. We are clear that the system itself is flawed. So whether they have, uh, you know, a Kamala Harris or a Ben Dixon or a Kamal Franklin in office, you know, like we talked about before, you know, it's like McDonald's. You can come in there 
as a as a uh, uh, a, a master chef. You know what I mean? But whatever is on the menu, what we're eating. You understand what I'm saying? You're not coming with me, uh, cordon bleu. We're not eating, uh, filet mignon. You know, we, we know you cook well and, you know, you, you're able to come with all these biscuits and all this beautiful food, but it's not happening here. It's Big Macs on the menu. You <laughs> and that's what, that's- you know, the happy meal. That, that's what's going on. We don't care about, you know, you know, you're a vegan. You hang out with Russell Simmons. Uh, you, you, you practice, you know, yoga, none of that matters. You know what I mean? And we have to, you have to go to, you know, one thing with boxing, you know, back in the day, you know, I used to box as a team. And one of the things we had to do was, was study the tape of other boxers, study other fighters, see, see how they get down. If we study the track record of a Kamala Harris or a uh, mm. Lion Joe Biden, then we, we'll be clear. You know, I respect mm-hmm. the folks that say, okay, boom, I voted for Biden because of the fact that I was tired of one old white man, so I wanted to come with another old white man who may not be as rude. It, it's mm-hmm. like uh, choosing your, your whether you want to be raped or you want a simple sexual assault. Either way, you don't want it either, either program. You know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you don't want to be touched. And I think that once we, we look at it for what it is, we we'll, we'll begin to change our tune. But for now, you know, that, you know, it's, it's all good yeah. in the hood. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's let's shift. I wanted to shift gears with you guys. With you guys, I know that you guys are organizers, um, and a lot has gone down. And you know, I mean, this has been going down as far as police brutality, police murders, uh, or them murdering us. Um, and when I say us, I mean black people. Um, yeah. And th- uh, there was uh, just news that came out about um, the Derek Chauvin case mm-hmm. and how the um, how basically the uh, judge reinstates third degree murder charge against Der- Derek Chauvin. So mm-hmm. would you guys say that that is a, a step towards something great, particularly in, the, in this George Floyd murder? Or um, do you think that some, something will end correctly here. I mean, I think that the track record is don't get your hopes up, right? The, the track mm-hmm. record is that uh, the, the court system, the criminal justice system protects its own. It doesn't protect black people. It arrests black people. It, it victimizes black people. It jails black people, it imprisons black people, and ultimately it kills black people, right? So I wouldn't get my hopes up um, as an organizer or as you know myself, a former practicing attorney, that just the reinstatement of uh, charges means anything around what will ultimately happen with the conviction. In fact, and I go as far as to say, you know, I think you know this is similar to Rodney King, as in this was mm. captured on videotape. Um, there's yeah. been outrage about it. The difference so far has been that free an outcome of a trial. There's been resistance in the streets. Um, and so the system may also sacrifice this individual cop um, in order to keep mm. things cool, right? Because ultimately what it's really about is do they maintain power and control? Um, and if that means every now and then throwing one of their own under a bus because the actions were so egregious, um, then that may happen. But that doesn't change the, the very nature of how policing is done on black people in this country. Um, In fact, when we look at police murders, we're looking at the tip of the iceberg um, because again, what we have is millions of stop and frisk, millions of arrests, um, millions of of jailings and imprisonment. Um, And so we are excess labor and then we become cheap labor in prison. um, Mm. And that system still happens and still operates. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you speaking speaking my language, especially with the the free labor, the slave labor that the prison industrial complex is capitalizing on every single day in this country. And it, it another story that I know you guys are familiar with um, right here in Georgia, Kendrick Johnson. Um, that case has been reopened, um, and it was invest- the teenager uh, who was found dead rolled up in a gym mat uh, eight years ago. Um, the investigation has been reopened, according to Lowndes, Lowndes County Sheriff Ashley Polk. Uh, the investigation concluded, the original uh, investigation said that he accidentally slipped into the center of the mat uh, while reaching for a mm-hmm. shoe and got stuck. Um, the story itself is, is disturbing. The insult to injury where they are playing on our intelligence 
is is what's infuriating. Um, I, I just kind of want to get your feedback in terms of what are you thinking in, in, with the reopening of the case? Because again, like we, even with the Derek Chauvin, I'm with you, Kamal. I don't. I, I'm I'm past the stage where I get my hopes up for any justice mm-hmm. from this injustice system. I think um, I, I worked with the family of Kendrick Johnson when the case first went down. You know, we've been supporters, uh, members of organizations have been back and forth, and it, it pains me every time I see the Johnsons because of the fact that I, I know that, um, you know, they, they have a, a sense of determination. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's like, unfortunately, it's only so far you can go. To me, I, I think that these folks are playing with them, and it's unfortunate. I think that um, they're being tortured. I think there's been so many lies. I think they, they exhumed his body, I believe, uh, twice already. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, so it, it's a very touchy case to me. So I, I look at it like, man, you know, having children, not being able to fathom sending my child to school and him never coming back and, and, mm-hmm. and you telling me some cockamamie story like he dropped his... Uh, his uh, shoe in the in the, uh, in the in the mat and uh, got stuck in the mat. This this young man was an athlete, you know. Mm. For one, number mm. two, one of the things that a lot of folks aren't hearing is that the camera footage it shows him going inside of the gym and never coming out. And then there's this space within the camera where, you know, no one knows what happened. The camera mysteriously uh, malfunctioned until the next day when they when they discover his body. You know, so. Uh, you know, it's, it's a disgusting case, but, you know, we, we, we realize that uh, and recognize that we're in the state of Georgia, you know, and Georgia is a traditionally racist part of this, this, this American pie. It's a racist piece of this American pie. And if you look at all the cases from Katherine Johnson, the 92 year old who was gunned down here in Atlanta in our own home. If you look at the case of uh, uh, the young man who was jogging, uh, back in February uh, yeah. in Brunswick, Georgia. Ahmad, mm-hmm. Yeah, Ahmad. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's so many different, uh, you know, situations, but my yeah. heart goes out to the, to the Johnsons because of the fact that they're truly fighters, but I think that um, what these people are doing is putting uh, uh, brown sugar on feces and calling it chocolate. And they're wow. trying to just, you know, have us keep hope alive. You know, but uh, at some point, there has to be some type of consequences and repercussions that go beyond uh, hoping and wishing and praying that um, they may decide to roll the dice and, and, and choose which one of their folks they want to throw under the bus. Mm. Mm. Fellas, um, I, I wish we had more time to explore more of, of these issues with you. I'd love to have you back. I, uh, but before you go, please tell everybody how they can support your program because it is, I, I listen to it um, and it is definitely worth subscribing to and supporting. How can they find your work? Sure. Uh, our work is uh, blackpowermedia.org. Um, uh, and, you know, we, we have a, a started a, a media company with uh, uh, Jared Ball, uh, Cherise mm. Bird and Sally. Um, uh, the Lukemans and some other folks uh, to bring a, a, a media pa- uh, channel that's firmly uh, ensconced in self-determination politics. So the YouTube channel is Black Power Media. Um, and we and all our different shows are there for people to listen to and to watch. That's what's up. That's what's up. Kamal Franklin, Kalanji Changa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and, you guys. And, and tell Professor Ball I said, what's up? I mix what I like. I love his work, too. I love you <laughs> yeah. guys working together. We had him on, and, yeah. and that was a very, it was, was, it was lovely. Like- <laughs> you guys are all, I, now I can see the connection now. I can see the connection yeah, now. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. No, two dope brothers. We appreciate y'all, and we'd love to have you back anytime. Thanks so much. Hey, we appreciate you. It's good to see you uh, a little calm today. Last time we saw you, you was about to rip it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about, man? He's like, I'm always calm. Um, until, uh, until, 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 conservative. <laughs> You, you know what I mean? I say, you know, I don't have my hoodie on today. That's what it is. I got, I got on my, uh, I don't know what jacket this is instead of my hoodie. But nah, man, y'all put me in that room with that. Listen, man, I can handle conversations with my revolutionary brothers who are further revolutionary than me to the left of me. What I can't handle are these cats to the right of me who say we need more capitalism. We need more Donald Trump. And we need that. That's the stuff that set me off. So uh, y'all put me in the, y'all put me in the lion's den. And I had to, I had to react accordingly. So y'all go, if you don't watch anything else, go watch that episode. Cause it was, it was kind 
that a lot. And my shout out to our sister uh, Noah Changa, uh, who yeah, was yeah. on that episode with us. That that was really dope. Shout out but, to Noah. Yeah. All right, fellas. Uh, James, Rebecca, Rebecca, we what what you got? You want? I know we're over time already. You you want to hit a couple of those videos? Or what you want to do? Oh yeah, let's, let's make sure we. Uh, <laughs> she, 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 she like eighty feet. She eighty feet away from her camera. Let's, let's make Look, sure we I'm get back the sunset done. <laughs> what happened to your light? Every time, every time this thing goes off, it's like it's telling me it's time to go. I always unplug it because I think we're gonna be at a good amount of time, and it actually is just like two. It's set for two hours. I, I feel like I just but, don't um, understand why you don't have it. Like anyway, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that. Out. We'll, we'll figure out why your camera don't. Because stay it's on. near my stove. When I cook, I like I, I unplug it. So and I are you I just, cooking around these expensive ass cameras? No, I put them away. <laughs> That's why it was unplugged. So I put them away, and I you have to reset melt- them. You for this, right. yeah, That's what she was doing. All right. All right, before we get out here, let's let's go. Let's do a couple of Black Joy stories, man, because you know the the, the weight the weight of those other stories really really do it it, it brings me down. Even though we got to cover it, we got to do yeah. it um, because we wouldn't be doing our job if not. But that don't mean we can't have a little bit of joy before we get out of here. What you got, Rebecca? Um, what do I have? There were um, I. I'm going to use the ones that we have here. They've been saying here. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so look, look, um, Dwayne, just go ahead and roll them. Roll what, two. What, what like, you got? What you got? Surprise we'll respond. Us. Surprises. There you go. Right. <laughs> Are you smart? Wow. Oh. Where oh. is Africa? Africa. Yes. At work. At work? Yeah. At work? yeah. That's where Africa is? Yeah. The, the continent? Yes. But Bria. <laughs> You know what? Good job. Good job. <laughs> he said, and let me tell you something. She didn't get it wrong either. Because her you friend must be called Africa. She got and, a friend. She or got a family. Africa is really, yeah. I mean, at Putting work. Putting in all the Been work. Been at work. Been doing right. work. Always work. Um, you know, working through our bloodstream. Africa is at work. The, the, and the it, white folks be mad about it. I mean, they don't just be bad about it. They come and take it, right? <laughs> they come, they come. I, right, right. I got to, um, I got to, just for the culture, I got to play that Nigel Farage clip again because she's speaking truth right here. Right, first of all, wait, wait. Shout out to the young man. Uh, I think his name, what was his name? Uh, Lawrence uh, Hines, um, or his last name is Hines. Uh, he's from my hometown, Brookhaven, Mississippi. So shout out to him. He's blowing up all over the place on TikTok and everything. <laughs> um, but little sis is right. Africa been at work. And been at work on behalf of of all these colonizers who've been uh, pillaging Africa for <laughs> centuries. Um, on, and just 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 because you weren't here when we did it, uh, run that clip of Nigel Farage talking about how nobody's done more for people of color than the British Crown. Run because I wasn't says, here for it. Let me see that. The Queen and the royal family have spent the last seventy years touring round the Commonwealth. The vast majority of those people are black and Asian. I would put it to you. Nobody in the world in history has done more for people of color than the British royal family. I'm disgusted. The British people are disgusted. And by a majority of two to one, opinion polls now say we want them stripped of their titles. <laughs> so, Rebecca, they, they have, they, nobody's done more for people of color around the globe than, than the British, British crown. And I heard the you monarchy. say something, and, and this is going to be on Mary Had a Little Lamb. No. Nobody has done more to right to um, sure. the people, and, and and it's been bad things. And it's funny that these people keep coming out and speaking out. It just gives me like, it just gives it gives me big colonizer vibes. It does. <laughs> um, it's just it's like I just picture them marching somewhere um, mm-hmm. and getting Taking ready their to diseases. go. Take, bringing their bringing their nasty diseases over while people have been learned like trying to come take our food recipes make it saltless <laughs> um, taking our music to, and, 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 and shaking it with no ass the, the blues uh, giving us just sad songs I just you know how we go how we go from a colonial uh, 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 colonization critique to because all of that is colonization when they, and, when they go. It. To, um, when they go into neighborhoods that are perfectly black and thriving and, and, then, and just have a white woman jogging down the street. Listen, uh, <laughs> that is the, the white listen, woman ain't nobody about braver. the corner store. Uh, and, and she complains about she's the only person complaining about the corner store. And now the corner store that has been essential to your family for years is gone. 
See, you know, it they, just gives me those vibes. They used to colonize us by sending, you know, uh, uh, their ships out and their and their and their navy out. Uh, and Christopher Columbus, out. you know, your community. We I don't even know we should call it gentrification anymore. It's such a. Uh, 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 I mean, I understand the word. It's a gentrified it, it word. It's a it's a gentrified <laughs> word. It's they colonize in the hood. They are colonizing the hood. And the way you know your block is getting ready to be colonized is because Karen is coming through running. Not she's, and then her ponytail is swinging. Dog. And she's like, um, you know, you accidentally... But I jog too. So when I'm jogging, they be acting like I'm in the wrong neighborhood. But now, <laughs> but now, you know, I live in this predominantly white area. And you I... know they mad. They, they mad. They, they hate it. They mad because we've been coming in and we've been... You know, I gentrification said, oh, is a response. I'm to about to take this area back. It looks like it's <laughs> real black out here. We about to take it back. I'm inviting all so, people to come move out here. That area ain't you. never been black. It's always been white. That's what they do. To, never if mind. I move, if, if I move a little bit further down, if I go five minutes down the other side of the street, I'm like, dang, this is where the culture's at. It's a lot well, of you got you got to cross MLK Boulevard, and then you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> or, the, or, the, or the railroad tracks, right? So. <laughs> that, it's one, no, it's really like that. There it is, is railroads, and once you cross the, the railroads, oh, it man. gets different. And uh, and like we used to say at FAMU, um, across the tracks. Because yeah. we know it's two tracks. different worlds. Yep. Literally across Listen, I live the when I move, really is. When I moved to Atlanta, I had never because I came from Boston to Atlanta. Boston is like what three percent black and Atlanta's like ninety seven percent black. Um and so I came out to this little neighborhood that we've been in and all I saw were black families, like black dads and their kids out in this, you know, beautiful neighborhood. And I'm like, wow, I'm at home. About nine months later, I went in the grocery store and I saw just I, I saw white people for the first time in nine months. And I was like, what the hell is I, I, I realized I realized that there really is something to people coming to infiltrate your community. I'm like, as soon as I saw Karen, I'm like, y'all about to start gentrifying our neighborhood. Y'all about to start and, and recolonizing our neighborhood. We perfectly fine out here. We ain't even nowhere close it. near the city. We out here got our own little suburb of blackness. And here come Karen running through our neighborhood. So and it's funny. it might be time for me to go. Yeah, no, yeah, maybe I'm over here colonizing their stuff. <laughs> but um, come on, listen, colonizer. What, yeah, I will be that. I go to the Target and I ask them for black products so much so <laughs> yes. that I think um, since I the first time I came here, I asked them for black products. She was like, um, maybe uh, you should try the one uh, in Marietta. I said I want it here. I want it here. Uh, did she try to send you to Marietta? Yes, because you she know it's, pretty, it's more it's more cultural there. But let me tell you something. Within this year, that particular product is now stocked at mm -hmm. this charge, right? Because yep. I was they got security like, locks on I it. come, I come all the time and I ask them, do you have this product? Why don't you have this product? They never have an excuse as to why. Mm. So finally they brought it in. And I remember pulling up another black girl next to me. We looking, we looking in the aisle. She was like, girl, finally they got it. I was like, mm. I know, right? And it's like they, then they put the security <laughs> locks on it. They put the oh, security no, locks here, on no, it. No, 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 no. They, they don't put security. More. They don't put see where I live in this predominantly um white area. They colonized won't put, area. They won't put nothing, no locks on nada. Nothing. Uh -huh. We even can take the oh, carts. So back we can liberate to our some apartment. stuff over there. Yes. But over here, but over and you literally seriously, it's like the, everything is just free. And I'm like, I'm not used to that because when I go over to yes, when I do go over to Marietta, the stuff that has um, the stuff that we use, black people use it be the one that that's locked up. I don't know if you saw that viral picture going around about the Jergens. I don't use Jergens anymore, but I don't know if you saw the um, the picture of the Jergens lotions and the the Jergens lotion with the extra moisture that Black folks use is the one <laughs> that are locked up. The, the regular Jergens <laughs> or the cherry blossom one. They got the, it, it was they got the it Vaseline was locked up. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was stocked because the white folks use that one. So it was stocked and there was no alarms on it. It wasn't locked up. Pregnancy tests are locked up. Uh, <laughs> All the things are locked up. Let me condoms. Those, yeah, condoms. Let me, are let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Like the number one thing that you could find at, at like go to Walmart in in a suburb, right? In these in these white neighborhoods, and look at the price of anything. Then go look at the exact other product in like Fulton County, right? The black side of town. Mm -hmm. They are charging us hood tax, black tax, yes, black taxes. They are mm -hmm. they are marking up the price. And I actually I asked them because you know me when I see this I, I call and I ask I say hey what's up with this? They say we have to charge more for security. Like really Walmart, really that's how we're doing it, and that's exactly what out. they do. That's Target. exactly what they do. Wow. All right, one more, one more, one more, one more video before we yeah. go because I know y'all got to go. Uh, whatever you else you got in the tank, Dwayne, let's run another one. Hey government, hey black citizen, 
I'd like to trade my ancestors were a slave card. I was looking to get 40 acres in a mule. If not a mule, I'll take a Toyota can. Y'all still mad about the slave thing? Plus, this card is old. It's not even in the best condition. And whose fault is that? The best I could do is maybe another black president. When? I've been dealing with a headache for the past four years, so you got to give me at least two terms. Yeah, all right, but he's got to be full black this time. How about his mom is black and his dad is Canadian? Kind of like Drake. Man, nobody want Drake as president. It's better than Kanye West. <laughs> you right. All right, fine. Next. Hey, government. Hey, student. You still switching majors? Mm-hmm. You know I might have a job for you when you finish school. You lying. You right. What can I do for you? Can I speak to student loans? You lying. You right. He said he's not here right now. I can see him. Hey, man, I was just looking for you. You got my money? No, it's a pandemic. I'm here to ask for my money oh, back. Whoa, don't say his name in vain like that. You in here cussing. This what is making money? me sad because it's too real. <laughs> it's for real, for real. <laughs> it's too real, child. Listen. That was, it was too real. It's not even funny, but it was funny. It was, it was it, funny it was, because it's like, you know, we can laugh at it, but then it's like, dang, that, that's real. That's, That's real. real. Listen, gov <laughs> government, student loans, they just attacking everybody, okay? And first, the black folks. But we can't, we can't get nothing. We have to always um, lower our standards, um, bring our bar lower. Um, mm. for, for anything that we ask, we have to take what they're giving us. And that's what that shows us. No matter what, this is it. That's what it is. Uh, and I'm tired of doing that. Benjamin mm. Dixon, okay, Bubba, uh. Bubba Jakes. I am tired of doing that. I'm tired. I'm mm. tired of doing it at the job. Yes. I'm tired of doing it in these media spaces. That's why I don't want to work for people. I don't want to work for corporate because it it will it will take my voice and minimize it. It will it will put me in a box. I have to do what they tell me to do. So mm. that's why I'm like, listen, get on Patreon right now. Um, <laughs> right some now. super chats so yeah. that you can like so so that we can keep doing this, right? Because oh, I don't want doing, to keep yeah. watering myself down for um for a dollar. I don't mm -hmm. want to keep watering myself down At for all. a stimmy, for a stimulus mm -hmm. check. I don't want to be begging. I want to be I want us free. to so I yeah, I want us to have free communities free. that 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 the police officers and white folks and the feds won't come and bomb. I want mm -hmm. that space for us mm -hmm. in in media. I do. I do. I do. Mm. And that's on Mary Had a Little Lamb. That's on Mary <laughs> Follow Had a Rebecca lamb. on Instagram, Twitter, and everywhere else at Rebecca Azor. That's Azor. R E. No, well, it's not the same on Instagram, but on Twitter, I'll just give you guys my Twitter. It's Rebecca Azor, uh, um, my first and last name, R E B E C C A A Z O R. And um, I love you guys. Um, and send me some love. Like, send me some some love, and I'll send it right back to you guys. And I hope that you guys that's have right. an amazing day. And tomorrow is Friday. So. What's Friday. Friday. Tune in. Friday. Tune in. Gotta get <laughs> hey, hey, James, can we be extremely like really ratchet and go back and get uh, Rebecca Black Friday, Friday, Friday and mix it in with something? Can you? you <laughs> I can do that. Maybe not. Tomorrow? Maybe not. Show? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I just, oh, I just feel, I'm feeling nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> That's Friday, it. Friday, Friday. <laughs> It was the one first the first viral song. I was going to say like one the, of the first viral songs. It was one of the first, viral, of the first viral songs. Yeah. <laughs> See if you could do anything with it, though. It is horrible. Mix so it with Hot the Bada Bitch. Yeah, something. Because that was like the first viral dance. So. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Well, y'all yeah, know where to weird. find me. <laughs> y'all find all of us here tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time till 10.30-ish. Apparently, we're going a little bit longer. If y'all want that full third hour, though, Patreon.com forward slash the BPD Patreon. show. Patreon.com. Third hour baby. would be full Patreon. of live Com. callers. James, <laughs> it's your work, man. Also, before you go, James, sponsors, if you guys are watching, if people are interested, because all you guys come on here and you guys love it, especially the white folks with money. When you come on the show, <laughs> spread the news, Ooh. spread the name. We do for you, you do for us. You scratch. You scratch my back, okay? You scratch my back. My back I, I love this. you guys. <laughs> mean we'll it. Have a good one. Morning. We'll see you tomorrow. Take it away, James. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, y'all can follow me, DJ X3C, on everything, every platform. DJ X3C, y'all. Get y'all one good song, and then it's off to Corporate America. We go. <laughs> Hope y'all enjoyed the show this morning, y'all. Shout out to everybody that joined us. It was definitely an amazing, amazing show today. And we appreciate all of y'all. Make sure that y'all hit that like button before you leave out the building today. Make sure that you share, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff and no one like it or not is going down again. Patreon.com slash the BPD show. Patreon.com slash the BPD show. I got a thing about you. You got a thing about me too. But you keep playing with me.
Cartier, son of a vet. We appreciate that super chat. Thank you. I got a thing about you. We got a thing for each other. So don't go wasting what you feeling. Don't be dumb, be dumb, be dumb. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> right, Pixie. <laughs> For your boy James Bubba Williams, better known as DJ Exclusive, y'all. It's time to go make the chicken. So I love y'all, man. We'll definitely see y'all in the morning, man. Thank you so much for the support, the love. Make sure that you go follow, follow, follow all of us on the, all the on all the platforms, and make sure that you follow, like it or not, on IG. Yes, like it or not is on IG. So make sure that you follow. Also, make sure that you join the Patreon account, Patreon.com/slash the BPD Show. Patreon.com/slash the BPD Show. All right, so all that is going to do it for us today on Like It or Not. Make sure that y'all tune in in the morning when we have a couple of other guests coming on, and it's going to be awesome. So make sure that you stay tuned. Like It or Not, DJ Exclusive, out. Love y'all.